Joining me now with all the latest Sky News political reporter, editor, I have to say, Andrew Clennell. Joining me accused <laughs> of uh, downgrading a title there, mate. There's a lot of downgrading going on in Canberra today. What I don't understand, you know, in, in this claim yeah, just lost my ear. Yeah, yep. that McCormack has, Michael McCormack, of leading a United Party, you know, the blood's now been spilled, it's all sorted, we move on, we're all friends, all the usual stuff you hear the politicians say. In all of that, Matt Canavan yesterday did the honourable thing by standing down from his position in the Cabinet underneath a man, his leader, that he said he could not support and, and clearly didn't today in the ballot. If it really is all behind Michael McCormack, why doesn't he demonstrate his strength as leader by returning Canavan into the Cabinet and indeed, there's a vacancy there, putting in Barnaby Joyce? Surely that would say that the National Party really is moving on. Well, yeah, he's punishing Canavan. There's no doubt about it. But I guess there's the other issue, Peter, which is he needed to offer people spots to get their support. And uh, that's what he's ended up doing. And he needed to give Darren Chester a cabinet spot so he wouldn't run as deputy against Little Proud because that would have endangered McCormack. And he needed to offer Keith Pitt a spot in cabinet to make sure of his support. So that's your simple answer. Canavan went against him. He rolled the dice. It was kind of a bit of chaos theory. He thought that if he resigned, some more momentum would build up and Joyce could get there. It looked early this morning Joyce could just get there or just fall a vote short, but things turned as people started to believe McCormack was going to win. And uh, that's what got him over the line. So far from convincing, but, yeah, I mean, of course they're divided. They're massively divided. And you saw in the coalition party room today, uh, Christensen and Joyce and Gillespie agitating on climate change and coal-fired power and all that sort of thing, which shows that they're not going to go quietly. But again, if they don't have their best team on the park, and I, I, I agree with your machinations, I mean, a lot of the ministry, forget talent, geography, gender, all the things people talk about, it comes down to pay off, payola, as my husband would say, who gets it and who doesn't. Um, <laughs> in all of this, the problem they've got is if the leadership of the National Party doesn't improve. If they don't claw back some of the other votes in, in polling like this poll, I, I have a good understanding of what their internal polling must be saying to them, particularly uh, in New South Wales and parts of Queensland. If they don't improve, then McCormack's further in trouble. And the only way they will improve is if they put their best team on the paddock. That's the problem. Well... The question of the best team starts with the leader, doesn't it? And do they have the best leader? Well, you tell me. And You're I the analyst. You I tell me. I think there are... Well, obviously not. And there were 11 of 21 who I believe did not think McCormack was the best leader, but some of them couldn't stomach having Barnaby Joyce back. And so if Little Proud wanted to run at it in a year or two, he could probably have it. Who knows? I mean, they're pretty divided, but that's the danger they've got. Now, if McCormack suddenly reverses his performance, Peter, and becomes this magic, good performer, solid performer, he'll be fine, but I don't think any of us can see that happening. We, we'll, we see stumbles down the track and it would require some sort of trigger for another spill, but no doubt it will come. I mean, the government's having a rocky time. You can't see more bumps not being down the road. And, and look, there's a lot of conjecture over the numbers. Um, I think the most credible reports are that it was 11 to McCormack and 10 for Joyce. I'd be interested in your view on that. But if it is that tied, that shows you uh, that a further challenge is almost inevitable. Well, I don't think it was 11-10. Joyce supporters are saying 11-10. But I think it was 11-10, say, two or three hours before the ballot. So it's the same thing, really, isn't it? I mean, it means people are pretty close to going over. So it might have ended up 13-8, McCormack's people saying 15-6, but even McCormack's people will tell you, Peter, that several people moved at the last minute, or two or three people moved at the last minute. So there were times in that 12 hours prior to the ballot where it was certainly 11-10. So that's what's giving Joyce and his supporters like Canavan Hope going forward. Does anyone think Barnaby Joyce still doesn't want to be leader? Does anyone think Matt Canavan doesn't still want to be a cabinet minister? Does anyone think they're going to go quietly? No, absolutely not.